Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the de definition of a composite function and look at some examples of composite functions. What is a composite function? A composite function is when you create a function by inputting one function into another. The notation that we use is f of g of x. So the way we pronounce this, this is red, f of g of x. And that's literally what it is. So we're gonna look, we would start with the innermost thing first. We would look at g of x first. And so we see g of x right here. And then whatever result we get from g of x, we would then plug into the function f. So we always start with the one that's uh, in the middle or to the right in the parentheses. And notice the notation for a composite function. It's like a little open circle. That is the notation for composite function, not to be mistaken for multiplication. So in a previous video, I talked about how we don't use a sign for multiplication. This is why. It's because we have this composite function and the symbol is so similar to that for multiplication. So we just wanna be really careful there. So let's look at an example. We're going to let f of x equal 3x minus 4 and g of x equal x squared minus 6. We can find two different composite functions. So keep in mind that composite functions are not commutative, meaning f of g of x is not the same as g of f of x. I mean, not always. Sometimes it is. So we're going to start with this one. So first, f of g of x. f of g of x. And again, this is f of g of x. We're going to start with g of x. So g of x is x squared minus 6. So now this gets replaced with x squared minus 6. Now anywhere in f that we see in x, we're going to replace it with x squared minus 6. So give us 3 times x squared minus 6 minus 4. This would be 3x squared minus 18 minus 4. And we'd end up with 3x squared minus 22. If we look at g of f of x, g of f of x. We're going to rewrite it first like this so we know what we're doing. We're going to start with f of x. So we haven't done anything with g yet. f of x is 3x minus 4. And now this means anywhere in g that we see in x, we're replacing it with 3x minus 4. So g, we have 3x minus 4 quantity squared minus 6. 3x minus 4 squared would be the first term squared. The product of the two terms doubled. 24x and the second term squared minus 6 giving us 9x squared minus 24x plus 10. So that would be our two examples of what composite functions look like. So again it's like a composite function is just putting a function into another function. Now let's talk about the domain of a composite function. So the domain of a composite function we're just going to say f of g of x just to make our lives easier. It consists of the set of real numbers that are defined in G, so meaning the domain of G, and then also we need what values, what output values in G are in the domain of F or restricted by the domain of F. So for example, if F of X equals one over X minus one and G of X equals one over X plus two, the domain of F of G of X would have these restrictions. So first of all, because we would be starting, if we look at this, this would be F of G of X, any restrictions on G are going to be restrictions on the composite function. And the restriction on G is that X plus 2 cannot equal 0. So that means X cannot equal negative 2. Now the next part is a little bit trickier. So we know we are restricted by the fact that X can't be negative 2. But now what we have to look for is the domain of F. So the domain of F would be X minus 1 cannot equal 0, so X cannot equal 1. But what we have to figure out is the input into G. So what would we plug into G so that the end result would be 1? So we would say, okay, 1 equals 1 over X plus 2. We can multiply both sides by X plus 2 to get uh, remove the fraction. We get X plus 2 equals 1, and that would be minus 2, negative 1. So this also means that we need to say it cannot equal 1. This also means that x cannot equal negative 1, because if we plug in negative 1 to g, we would end up getting 1, and then if we plug in 1 to f, that's undefined. So our domain here would be from negative infinity to negative 2, from negative 2 to negative 1, and from negative 1 to infinity. 
All right, let's look at some examples of evaluating composite functions. So we want to find f of g of x and its domain given f of x equals 4x minus 7 and g of x equals 2x plus 1. We can start with the restrictions on the domain. Uh, so there are none because these are both linear equations that don't have restrictions. Okay, that was nice. So then we have f of g of x. That would be f of 2x plus 1. So again, what this means, anywhere we see an x in the function f, we're replacing it with 2x plus 1. So we would get 4 times 2x plus 1 minus 7, right? So it's just this exact thing, but we'll replace x with 2x plus 1. That's going to be 8x plus 4 minus 7. That's 8x minus 3. So in the end, if we want to just write it nice, we would say the composite function f of g of x equals 8x minus 3. It also asks for the domain. And again, the, everything is linear here. So the functions that were given is linear. The composite function is linear. There are no restrictions. So the domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. Our next example, we're looking for g of f of x. So we want to be careful about the order in which we're looking for the composite function. Because now it does matter. Because this time we're looking for g of f of x. Okay, so first um, we can start with the domain. And there's no restrictions on f because it's a linear equation. But there are restrictions on g. Um, let's see. So it, we have a radical. This means that whatever's in the radical has to be non-negative. So it has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Otherwise, we're going to have imaginary numbers, which presents a problem. So now what we have to do is we have to say, OK, well, we can't end up with a number that's bigger than negative 2, because if we do, uh, we're going to have problems in our composite function. So we're going to go back to f, and we're going to say, OK, 6 minus x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. I'm going to move x and 2, just so that way I have a positive x. So this means that 8 has to be greater than or equal to x, or x has to be less than or equal to 8. Interesting. OK. So now we, we know our domain, and then we can verify this probably right now. So we're going to start with f of x, that's 6 minus x, uh, sorry, g of 6 minus x, there we go. And then anywhere in g that we see an x, we're replacing it with 6 minus x. So g of f of x would be the square root of 2, and then instead of x, we're going to put 6 minus x. And then just cleaning this up, I'll go back to the form we would get 8 minus x. And we can even see here, so you can see in the final result that this kind of matches with that domain. We know that 8 minus x needs to be bigger than or equal to 0. That would be 8 is greater than or equal to x. So that took us back to right there. So we can see how it all works out. If this right here is a little bit confusing, uh, but you have to find the composite function anyway. You can always look for restrictions on the composite function instead, if that makes if that makes sense. See, you can see how it all kind of like works out here. All right, but we need to write the domain. So we have one part done. The domain of g of f of x would be, let's see, what are our restrictions? It has to be less than or equal to 8, so negative infinity. But now we need to be careful here because we have to look at the, oh, no, we're good. We're good, we're good. Eight. And we close because there were no restrictions on f. I was thinking we had to worry about the negative 2, but we don't because we only had to worry about restrictions on f, which there were none. So then we would have the domain from negative infinity to 8. Our next example, whoa, we've got fractions. OK, so with fractions and with variables in the denominators, we, we're going to have issues because those denominators cannot equal 0. And we're looking for g of f of x. So g of f of x. So we're going to start with restrictions of f. And that means that x minus 5 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal 5. If you want to hold off for the time being on finding the restrictions for g of f of x, because I know it can be a little bit weird, we can do that. So we can just go right into the composite function. We're starting with f of x. We have 1 over x minus 5. G of f. G of 1 over x minus 5. And then we're going to replace anywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with 1 over x minus 5, and that's going to give us, I'm just going to write this whole thing, x equals 1 over 1 over x minus 5 plus 5. 
We don't want to keep a complex fraction in our answer, so we are going to rewrite the complex fraction. We can come down to the bottom and say, okay, 1 over 1 over x minus 5 can be rewritten as 1 over, we'll just say 1. 1 divided by 1 over x minus 5, which would be 1 times x minus 5 over 1. All of the 1s are identities, so they just kind of don't really do anything to the rest of it, and we end up with just x minus 5. Interesting. Okay, so then we end up here. We have x minus 5, and let's not forget we have this plus 5 from the function g, right? We don't want to forget about the rest of the function g, and we end up with just x. So when we plug in the function f into g, we end up with x, and that's a really special thing. Um, that means, getting a little ahead of myself here, but this means that f and g are probably inverse functions of each other. Uh, I say probably because we would have to check the other way too and see if we plugged in f of g of x if that also equaled x. Um, and then any restrictions here? No, because it's a linear thing. So the only restrictions on the domain were those restrictions from f. So the domain will be all real numbers except for 5. Okay, cool. And our last example, kind of an interesting one, we have g of g of x and its domain. So in this case, we're just inserting a function into itself. It's a very meta thing going on here. We're looking for g of g of x. We might start with the domain here. This is a, a quadratic or a polynomial function. There's no restriction. So the domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. I imagine it's going to stay that way. All right, so then we would be looking at g, and we're looking at g of x. That's x squared minus 4x. And now, this is saying anywhere in g that we see x, we're replacing it with x squared minus 4x. So we would replace it right here, x squared minus 4x squared, minus 4, there's another x, so that becomes x squared minus 4x. We definitely want to clean this up, g of g of x, x squared minus 4x, that would be the first term squared, x to the fourth, minus the product of the two doubled would be 8x cubed. Um, plus the second term squared, 16x squared. Now we're going to distribute negative 4 minus 4x squared, and negative 4 times a negative will be positive 16x. Cleaning this up one final time, we get x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus 16x. So we can say g of g of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus 16x. And the domain here, it's also a polynomial, so no restrictions, negative infinity to infinity. Thank you for stopping by.